Hello everyone, and as you may have noticed, I've undergone a quite significant change. I've officially become a wow man. I love this mustache and I'm never taking it off. Ah. Happy Halloween, everybody. That was really gross. No, but seriously, happy Halloween, you guys. It is a great day for horror. And in today's video, we are gonna be taking a look at Sneaky Snack Bar. And this is a series that I have been wanting to take a look at for um, quite a while, actually. And if you are new here, my name is Wowman. Uh, I cover tons of analog horror videos. This includes The Walton Files, Harmony and Horror, and most recently, uh, we covered the Mandela Catalog. So if you are new, subscribe if you like this kind of content, it'd be great. But without further ado, let's get into this video, baby. Need to hide. We love each other. So Sneaky Snack Bar's first episode, Don't Hide, sets the tone for the entire series going forward. In the opening shot, there is a picture of what appears to be a little boy with his face missing that only appears for half a second. Then we can see a clip of someone typing into what looks like a database of some sorts. And directly after this we get a clip of someone inside of the Toby animatronic, who we will learn more about in later episodes as we go through these one by one. Another thing to note is that the tape is also dated November 28th, 1990, and it takes place at 4.23pm. And for the most part, in most locations, at 4.23, the sun is still out. But the person in the Toby animatronic is in a very dark room. So perhaps this person is trapped in a dark room where light cannot reach them. Directly after this, we get confirmation that this is in fact the Toby animatronic. Then Sneaky says, I won't hurt you. I won't hurt you. Saying this as it stands in front of the Toby animatronic, seemingly passed out or potentially even dead by the hands of Sneaky. And in this scene, Sneaky is presumably talking to a child, as he mentions that he will take them somewhere filled with unicorns and candy. Take my hand and I'll take you somewhere special. Somewhere full of rainbows, candy, and unicorns. A place where you'll be loved. So it does become clear that Sneaky is trying to manipulate a child to go with him somewhere. Sneaky ends it off by saying, You will be loved by us. A place where you'll be loved. By us. In the description of the video, there is a message from someone named Jonathan Wixerglad. This tape was found in a cardboard box in the parts and service room of Sneaky Snack Bar, probably stating that for the employees to know where it should go. I decided to take the tape home, where I could view it on my VHS player. I regret it deeply. Of course, this could be a hoax set up by some teenagers that got into the place, but I can never know for sure. Unless I investigate this mystery further. Wish me luck, Jonathan Wixerglad. So from this we can establish that Sneaky Snack Bar is still open for business and that the establishment is trying to hide these tapes from the public eye. A clown is seen standing in the rain and someone is recording this clown sighting. However, the tape cuts out and the clown is gone. Shortly after, we get an image of the Toby animatronic, empty, hollow, and lifeless. And this further proves the possibility that Sneaky killed Toby in the last tape. The sideshow clown gives this piece of dialogue. Ugly. And then it cuts to a clown holding a balloon in darkness, with its mouth sewn shut, and says, I still love you. But the real question remains, why is this animatronic's mouth sewn shut? Because if we do look at Sneaky and Toby, neither of their mouths are sewn shut. So perhaps Sneaky is the one that did this to the clown. The final shot shows what lied dormant inside of the clown. 
a demon. And perhaps this is why the clown's mouth was sewn shut, to contain the demon that was inside of the clown. But this demon has broken free from its prison. And then we do get another message from Jonathan. This is the next tape that I found in the kitchen of Sneakies. It was pretty dusty. I'm lucky it even worked in my VHS player. On the back of the tape, there was a sticker that resembled the sun. I don't get it. I thought the tape would give me some clues as to what it meant, but I couldn't understand a thing. All it did was give me chills. Jonathan Wicks are glad. The next tape in the series is called Sneaky's Sound Test and is recorded footage of an abandoned sneaky snack bar. And from what the tape tells us, this footage was recorded by students, as the tape suggests right here. So what we can assume happened is that some students broke into the sneaky snack bar after hours and decided to record it. However, the dialogue that follows sounds like a flashback of when the restaurant was still open. So basically in a week we're going to be relocating these animatronics to a new location. So we need to run a few tests on sneaky here. And from the interchange, it sounds like a manager telling their employee that they're going to relocate the restaurant. However, before they do, they have to run a few tests and clean the Sneaky's animatronics. And one of the tests include playing sounds to see how the animatronics react. I'm going to play a sound and we'll see how he reacts. However, one of the sounds triggers a negative reaction from the animatronic and it runs away. supposed to happen. Hang on, let me refer to my handbook. Let Seconds later, the sneaky animatronic attacks the employee, and we can assume them to be killed by the hands of Sneaky. It's like these tapes just keep appearing whenever I come here. I kind of want to stop, but I can't. It's like my brain wants me to go here every day. But I don't understand why. Anyways, this tape is interesting. It looks like somebody named Sam and an anonymous voice were testing an animatronic. The cat one. Sneaky. It, it doesn't matter. It's clearly a killing machine. But why? Why do these robots kill? I still don't have enough information. For now, I'm going to bed. I'll write again tomorrow. The next tape in the series is called Animatronic Mascot Training Video. The tape starts with an image of the Toby animatronic's head. Then directly after we see a little girl named Emily that was attacked by Sneaky. We can see blood on the girl's face and Sneaky staring at her from within the darkness. The tape cuts and it turns into a training video stating the procedures on how to clean the animatronics. The tape does mention that the animatronics are part costume, part animatronic performers. And essentially what this means is that a person can wear the suit of the animatronic, but when they take it off, the suit will still remain as an animatronic. It's able to move on its own if it has a person inside or if it doesn't. The final shot is a continuation of the last tape, where the students broke into the restaurant and they begin playing a game inside the restaurant called Sneaky's Pizza Quest. But mere moments later, Sneaky attacks them. And what's interesting about this tape is that the message that we usually get from Jonathan is absent in this description. All there is is this message. The next tape that we do get is called Fun. The tape begins as an advertisement for the restaurant, Sneaky Snack Bar. Its slogan, where fun is number one. It's honestly very catchy. <laughs> where fun is number one. That's good. At the end of the advertisement, it states the following. Sneaky Entertainment is not responsible for any injuries or death caused by your animatronics nor malfunctions in your systems. Please watch your children responsibly. 
essentially saying that the restaurant is in no way in any form responsible for any injuries caused to children by the animatronics. Meaning the entire establishment is well aware that these animatronics have the potential to be dangerous. They know what these monstrosities are capable of, but do nothing. All they do is send a very passive warning in their advertisement. Another animatronic is shown speaking to Emily, the child we saw in the last tape. The animatronic says the following. Emily, I can get you out of here. Away from them. They got rid of us for a reason. We killed. But I changed. I can help you. You'll be safe. Come here, Emily. The animatronic is telling Emily that they can get her out of here, stating that the establishment got rid of them because they killed somebody. Furthermore, telling Emily that she will be safe if she comes with them. So if we do connect this to the first tape, it means that Snakey was trying to manipulate Emily in this last scene. Which also means that Snakey and this animatronic, Luna, are working together for some reason that we don't know so far. And the only way that they can escape is if Emily lets them out. And in this tape, we get another message from Jonathan, who was absent in the last tape's description. I've been waking up every night from terrifying nightmares. Even before seeing this tape, I'd seen this vintage version of Sneaky in my dreams. This name always replays in my head. Emily. I'm too horrified to watch any more of these, but my body makes me. I'm intrigued. Too intrigued. I feel like I'm being watched every second of the day. I need help. And fast. In the next tape labeled Find You, in this tape we see what Luna was referring to when she was talking about how the company got rid of them because they killed. In this footage we can see the Toby animatronic and another animatronic carrying away the lifeless body of a person they both murdered. The man's face is mangled as if the animatronics beat him. Even the person's eyeballs are missing, alluding that they ripped those out as well, then finishing him off by slicing his neck. The animatronics are truly ruthless. And in the description we receive this message from Jonathan. And under all of this, he states one thing, I love you, Emily. Jonathan is beginning to lose his sanity as a direct result of these tapes, and at this point he may be too far gone. Currently on the case of the missing child, Emily. This tape begins from the perspective of a police officer named Baker, speaking with his colleague as they search for Emily in the woods. Baker is wandering in the woods and he states that he's on the case of the missing person, Emily. Currently on the case of the missing child, Emily. And this is the same Emily that Sneaky and Luna were trying to manipulate into setting them free. Baker says he's on the lookout for Emily's body and his colleague, Garrett, interrupts by saying, There's a slim chance that she may still be alive, but the chances are very low. Then screams are heard from within the forest. What the hell was that noise? Then Garrett stops responding immediately after the screams are heard. Garrett, are you there? Oh my god, Garrett, please answer me. This isn't funny. 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 The tape begins to glitch, and we get an image of, presumably, Garrett. And it reveals that Garrett has become possessed by the same demon, or at least a variation of the demon seen in the Sideshow Clown tape. Moments later, Baker is attacked by Sneaky. Sneaky. 
and from this we can assume that Emily was successfully manipulated into setting Sneaky and Luna free, because in this tape, Sneaky attacked two police officers. The tape cuts to a flashback between Emily and her older sister, and her mother. The mother demands that her oldest daughter watch an episode of Sneaky with her little sister. Mom, do I have to watch this stupid kids show with Emily? You're going to stop complaining right now and watch the show with your little sister. But then the tape becomes distorted and we see what's left of Emily's corpse. Her face is bloody and her eyeballs carved out, just like the man who was murdered by Toby and Luna. A reoccurring theme of carving the eyeballs out of their victims. And this also does further prove that Emily was successfully manipulated by Sneaky and Luna. And what they did next is described by this image, this horrifying image. The next clip is an animation from the Sneaky's television show. But what is very interesting about this tape is that there is a son with an eyeball in the background staring at the child. And why is this interesting you may ask? Well, if we recall back to a message left to us by Anthony before he went, um, well insane, he stated that on the back of the tape that he found, there was a sticker that resembled the sun. On the back of the tape, there was a sticker that resembled the sun. The tape cuts once again and we get this piece of dialogue from Emily. It's been hard to breathe. I was starving. I was bleeding. I can't get out. He has me. He holds me inside. My body is not here anymore. It's dead. It's me. I'm Emily. Emily was held hostage by Sneaky in the dark room seen in the first episode, and Emily tells her sister how she died. Emily eventually either died of starvation or bled to death in that room. She says her body is dead, but she is still here. Endless hell. The tape begins and a faceless host describes that the following footage is of a lost episode of Sneaky and Friends. The crew claims they were experiencing paranormal activity while working on the episode, and this caused them to stop working halfway through. Even stating that the team that was creating the episode completely disbanded which caused the cancellation of the TV show. The tape begins and right off the bat we can see an image of Sneaky smiling in darkness in what looks like a vent. Oh my god. Sneaky sauce? What follows is an image of someone new. So this is either Officer Baker, whose POV we saw in the tape called Fun, or somebody completely new. But I do have a strong feeling that this character is Baker. Also something very interesting is that Baker still has his eyeballs intact because based off of Sneaky's previous victims, he always takes out their eyeballs. Baker's mouth is sewn shut, just like what they did to the sideshow clown. And at this time, we don't know why Sneaky has kept Baker alive. All we know is that it can't be good. And based on the text that's below him, Sneaky is keeping him hostage. The tape cuts to what looks like the Sneaky's Pizza Quest, an arcade game that we saw in the mascot training video. On the wall there's a framed picture of Baker, and the Sneaky animatronic says the exact same thing that Baker did. The tape goes black and an image of Baker is seen screaming. This is most likely the moment Sneaky attacked him in the woods. So what we know is that an officer by the name of Baker was tasked with looking for the missing person, Emily. However, while he was in those woods searching for the girl, his partner stopped responding and seconds later, Baker was attacked by Sneaky in those woods, only to end up trapped in a room with his mouth sewn shut and stuffed inside of an animatronic. Forever trapped in this room, unable to breathe, 
or even cry. What follows is a statement from the company that reads the following. Some moronic people think our company had something to do with the missing children incident that happened this week. But truthfully, we had nothing to do with it. There is no evidence proving we were involved. And we assure you that our restaurant is the safest child-friendly zone around. Even if it had been us, we would have not been held responsible for any injuries or death. So the company had planned on releasing this tape to the public, essentially stating that they had nothing to do with these missing children and that those people are morons, the ones that think that they actually did it. Furthermore, stating that even if they did do it, they wouldn't even be held responsible. And calling back to the tape fun, it does clearly state that in their commercial. CP Entertainment is not responsible for any injuries or death caused by your animatronics nor malfunctions in their systems. Please watch your children responsibly. Saying that Sneaky Entertainment is not responsible for any injuries caused by animatronics. However, from a legality standpoint, I don't think that this would be enough to prevent a company from being sued, especially when it came to missing children. Unless parents willingly signed a waiver before entering the restaurant, which in all honesty could be the case, but I don't think parents would be signing waivers before going to a, a restaurant that is child friendly. Later in the tape, we see someone alone in the restaurant looking down a dark corridor. And that's when Sneaky seemingly teleports right in front of the person. Because even if we slow down this tape frame by frame, Sneaky does not come out of the shadows but rather appears right in front of the person. Which leads me to believe that Sneaky is some sort of entity or a spirit of some kind. Perhaps even a lingering spirit of one of the missing children that went missing in the restaurant. Their spirit haunting the depths of the restaurant. The next scene we get is reflected text and an image of what appears to be a father and his daughter. The text, when reflected, does read this. The fear rushed through your spine and rattles your skull. And then in red text, it does read, you couldn't save her. And this is the man that is inside of the Toby animatronic. Next, we get two white grinning figures speaking to each other. The conversation goes as follows. I can set you free. Don't go in the light. I used to bring joy. In the light, there is no joy. Only pain. Suffering. The tape glitch- the tape then glitches and we get this piece of dialogue. I want to help you run. My son is evil. Don't go. Don't go. You deserve to be loved. I love you. Then the other spirit says, I see it, the light. And the spirit says, it burns. As to who these spirits are, the next episode will give us that exact answer. In the description of this video, we don't get a message from Jonathan like we usually do, but this time we get a message from somebody new named Charlotte. They state the following, I was just walking through the forest. I know it sounds odd, but it's my favorite pastime. I love strolling around to places, probably just because I enjoy getting away from my abusive parents. Earlier today, I passed this old restaurant. It was really run down. I decided to take a peek inside. What did I have to lose? It was pretty musty and dirty. Old children's drawings littered the floor and every object in sight was coated in thick dust. But the most bizarre thing in there was this tape. Luckily, there was a VHS player in there, so I could watch it. I don't know what to think of it. I had a feeling I had to drive home as fast as possible. So that's exactly what I did. So from this, we know that a new person has discovered this tape. And that person is Charlotte. The next tape is called Downstairs. In Downstairs, it serves as a continuation of the training tape. 
starting off by detailing how to repair one of the robots. It also says if you are injured to go to the back room so you don't get any blood on the floor. Sort of injury while repairing one of our robots head into a back room so you don't get any blood on the floor. Proving even more how aware the company is that their animatronics have become violent and even attempt to kill. But for some reason the restaurant is completely ignoring the fact that their animatronics have an ability and a capacity to kill. The next scene is about Emily. Emily hears a noise late at night in her home, and when she gets out of bed to see what it is, she discovers that her grandpa is standing in her hallway. Grandpa, is that you? She asked. The clown figure stood very still. Very still. Grandpa. And in an unlisted video, it shows a missing poster for Emily Campbell, seen right here. Age 7, last seen location, sneaky snack bar. And then we get this message from Emily to her grandpa. I love you, grandpa. I hope I can see you again soon. Mom says we have to wait a little bit before I can, but I made you this picture on the computer. And at the end of the tape, it says this. She's after him. So if we completely break down what exactly just happened, Emily's grandpa worked at the restaurant and for some reason Emily's mother told her that she has to wait until she can see him again. So there was something that was preventing Emily from seeing her grandfather. And then in the middle of the night, he shows up at her house with his eyeballs still intact. Meaning that this might not even be Emily's grandfather, because as we know from previous tapes, the animatronics are also costumes. So someone else could be inside of this clown suit, and since Emily's grandfather worked in the clown suit, she assumes that it is him when in fact it could be somebody completely different. But I know for a fact that this is not Emily's grandfather because if we do connect this to Endless Hell, because now we do know who this conversation was between. It was between Emily and her grandfather. You deserve to be loved. I love you, granddaughter. Meaning that Emily's father is evil and is somehow behind this series of horrific events. The secret area. In this tape, it does show that there is a hidden bunker inside of the woods that the two policemen were wandering, searching for the body of Emily. The tape shows the hidden bunker in the woods, a bunker where we saw the police officer was being held inside of. And inside that bunker, we see a demonic Toby animatronic. What follows is a victim of Sneaky, with their eyeballs torn out. They state the following. It's too late for her. She went into the light. I didn't lose myself like her. I'm still here. I want to help you, Charlotte. And in terms of who is saying this, we will discuss that later as we progress in these tapes. But this person is speaking directly to Charlotte, the person who has found the new versions of these tapes. And as for Charlotte, she is connected to this entire story, but we still have yet to figure out what role she exactly plays. Because based on how Charlotte wrote her entries, she has no knowledge of Sneaky Snack Bar, even calling it an old restaurant. Earlier today I passed this old restaurant. But somehow Charlotte is connected to the incidents of Sneaky Snack Bar, as the spirit is trying to help her. The spirit being a victim to these killer animatronics. The next installment is called Toby. The video starts as a public service announcement, saying that the residents of Bluefield are to stay indoors because the police are currently searching for an at-large murderer. Then it cuts to the perspective of someone outside, and in a single frame it says, Sister. The individual then opens a closet, but inside is a demonic Toby. The animatronic's mouth is ripped open as if its mouth was sewn shut, but then ripping its mouth open. Which does make me further believe that there was a demon inside of the Toby animatronic, just like the demon that was inside of the sideshow clown. 
this is when we get an interchange between Emily's grandfather and her father about the grandfather coming to work at the restaurant. Okay, so as you know, we had a little talk about you coming to work with me at the restaurant. Well, Dad, there it is. You wanted to entertain the kids, right? <laughs> now, I know you can't speak. If I knew you wanted to come to work here with me, I would have made this clown a mime character instead. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I can't wait to have you here. You make things a lot more fun, and it will help with everything I've been going through. And don't worry, I've stopped with the drugs, Dad. I might have been a little on edge before, but I'm okay now. You don't have to worry about me one bit. Well, uh, hmm. I love you, Dad. I can't wait for the first day this place opens. Oh, and uh, try it on. And this does confirm that this is an image of Emily and her father, which also means that Emily's father is inside of the Toby animatronic. However, before we get ahead of ourselves, I do want to break things down in simpler terms. Emily's father was inside the suit before it became corrupted, because we can see his eyeballs still intact in this image. However, when we look at Toby carrying this body away, the mouth is disfigured and the eyes are hollow and empty. And based off of what happened to the clown, it means that a demon or spirit is inhabiting the Toby suit as well as the sideshow clown. This interchange between Emily's father and her grandfather happens before the restaurant even opens, before Emily went missing, and before anything really went wrong for the company. So two very important things to note in this conversation is that one, Emily's grandfather is mute, meaning he cannot physically speak. And two, Emily's father has had experience with drug abuse and only stopped fairly recently and he could even be lying to his father. And what follows is perhaps the greatest reveal. When I saw this, I literally could not believe it. It honestly might be the biggest twist I've ever seen in an analog horror series. I will just let it play out and you guys can be just as shocked as I was. Emily was my sister. She killed an innocent person. She thought they were me. She just wanted us to be together forever. So Emily killed somebody in cold blood believing it was her sister. A seven-year-old child murdered somebody believing it was their sister. So Emily, a seven-year-old child, had intent on killing her sister. The final installment in the series is called Dead. The tape begins with the character Luna in an episode of Sneaky and Friends. Toby pops up once again and says his name is Jacob. My name is Jacob. Jacob Campbell. The father of Emily and the son of the man in the clown costume. That is when Jacob's father interrupts and says the following. His name is Jacob Campbell. I don't know why he's doing this. He's been dealing with a lot. He started taking drugs. It didn't ease his pain, but he had no other choice. Nobody accepted him. Nobody cared for him. Except for me. I was there when nobody else was. But look at me now. Dead. At least in here I have a voice. So I can warn you. He's coming Charlotte. But don't worry. Everly will protect you. Jacob's father's soul seems to be trapped within this tape. And is warning Charlotte that his son Jacob is coming for her. And based on what we have seen so far, it is very clear that Jacob has been corrupted by some demon and is still within the suit, or at least his carcass is. The story of Sneaky Snack Bar was brought to light by a person named Anthony, who found these discarded tapes that detailed the story about a man named Jacob. A person who started a franchise called Sneaky Snack Bar, which came out with a TV show and even an arcade game as the franchise continued to grow. Jacob had two daughters. One of them was named Emily, the other named Everlay. However, Jacob struggled with drug abuse 
something his family and his father saw. Soon before Jacob's restaurant was to open, he hired his father as one of the entertainers, the sideshow clown. Time went on, and it wouldn't be long before accusations would begin against the company. That sneaky snack bar was behind the children who had gone missing. This eventually led to the shutdown of the restaurant. However, between the time the restaurant was open, things began to go wrong. The animatronics began displaying aggressive behavior, but Jacob chose to ignore this and would instead send out this quick announcement in one of his commercials. Sometime later, Jacob's seven-year-old daughter, Emily, would go missing, and the last place she would be seen was at the Sneaky Snack Bar location. This eventually led to Jacob relocating the restaurant due to his grief, because he knew that this was his own fault. He couldn't save her, and blamed himself for her death. The disappearance of Emily would lead two officers searching for her, being attacked by the sneaky animatronic. One of them being captured and placed inside of the secret bunker in the woods, his mouth sewn shut and unable to even cry. The provider of these tapes, Anthony, eventually lost his sanity due to the tapes' contents. And the tapes continued to be provided by somebody new, Charlotte. It is clear that Charlotte has lost all recollection of her memories of Sneaky Snack Bar but was somehow involved with its downfall. And this is why Jacob is coming after her, filled with rage. Well, that was Sneaky Snack Bar explained, baby. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed, and as this is an ongoing series, there are tons of unanswered questions. I know I only, I feel like I really only tapped the surface of this entire analog horror series so feel free to poke holes in my theories and let me know what you think is going on in the comments and if you do want to stay up to date with this series or just simply enjoy analog horror as a whole don't forget to subscribe it would mean a lot but yes i want to wish you all a very happy halloween thank you for spending it with me if you did it means a lot i enjoyed spending it with you but most importantly stay safe everybody um take care i really hope you guys have a great day hope you have a safe day i want you guys to be safe because then you won't be able to watch my videos if you, anymore if you're not safe and if you didn't make it this far i have a very special present for you it's very secret only the people that made it to the end are going to see this fantastic present i have for you you gotta bow your head okay bow your head right now because you deserve this here you go Oh, you look fantastic. You deserve that. <laughs> Have a great day. See ya.